Morris, um, maybe you could talk us through this game plan of scoring at the earliest opportunity and then scoring at the latest possible opportunity for those of us in the crowd who are on the edge of our seats for most of the game. Mm -hmm. That's, that's no that's no strategy. We, we are not in a position that we can decide when we score goals. We we started in a three four three, and we get a great action in terms of if you look at the ingredients and how we've done it. We play up to our play point. We get vertical pressure on the ball. We win that, and we're calm enough to find a pass, penetration, and you get a penalty. Sometimes you go, sometimes you don't, but it was a stonewall penalty. But if you then look at how the game went for there, we were in and out, never really created much. We have a great chance from uh, Alex Ferguson, who has a 1-2 with the striker. Has a great, great save for the goal. It's basically a 1-1 one one with the goalkeeper. So that's 2 nothing. it should be. And then we felt that we were now picking enough up with the second balls, and I felt my midfield two were getting stretched a wee bit too much, so I put an extra body in there and went to a 3-5-2. So the eights are a wee bit lower and a bit flatter. So that means any second ball that's not perfect, you need to gain the ball. So I think then we gain control of the pitch. Now when they're putting balls in for 40 yards into my box, I'm never worried about that. I've got Mango, I've got Toddy, I've got Sam. So for me, that tweet worked. Um, some things you do as a manager work, some things you don't. And I think it's the first time in a long time we could have scored five goals today. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm very, very aware of what I'm saying. Don't mean to be disrespectful, but when you've got two one-on-ones with a keeper and the keeper's had a couple of other saves, you know, I, 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 was, I was so pleased for the players. And by the way, we've not spoken to pressure once this week. The last two weeks we've played the second bottom of the league twice. We've not spoken to pressure once. Well, I mean, so you it, know... It, and it showed in the performance. When I'm approaching these interviews, I'm thinking, do I, do I mention pressure to the manager? But mm -hmm. I tend not to. Anyway, let's, let's talk about Alex Ferguson. Mm -hmm. If I may say so, he, with all respect to the others in the team, he, he, he stood out a bit today. He looks a real prospect, the young man. But th this, boy's, this boy's going to play for St. John's. If he puts on 10 kilos, he'll play for St. Johnson. We're lucky we've got this boy. We're lucky that, that Callum Davidson has allowed him to come to us. But he's, now, he's, he, he's got great legs. He's got game awareness. He understands the principles of my zones, which not everybody does. And... I thought he was magnificent, but again, I, I thought everybody was magnificent today, you know, and, and but listen, I, I get excited when I see young boys that are going to go and have careers. There's boys that we have that are League 2 players, and they're brilliant League 2 players, and that's what, it's that balance of having that nitty gritty League 2, this is what I'm all about, to the boys that add that wee bit of sprinkling of kind of golden dust on your performance, Alex Ferguson. I think Andy Barman had a decent first game. Uh, well, I was just going to say, because he, he barely got started last time round, as you and I know, he was injured early in this, his mm. debut game. Um, he, he, he looked impressive today as well, chasing after everything and proving to be quite dangerous up front. Yeah, well, Andy, Andy's typical midfielder. Um, and I think on, on Astro Tough, better pitches, Andy really comes alike. Um, because it's difficult to dribble and move with the ball on that pitch, which is most mostly and most of the you know, League Two uh, League Two pitches. But it's not just Andy that runs; everybody runs. If you didn't run in my football team, you're not playing. Now that's what I've said for day one. This is for free. Running, running in the right direction and coaching them. That's my point. That's where I fix them. When you run, where you run, why you run. This is where this blend of a wee bit of coaching, a wee bit of structure, and attitude, and, and commitment, and, and, and togetherness. And there's one or two that stand to maybe think about being an individual. No, collective. Yeah, your collective's made up individuals, of course. But it's that common goal that needs, it's not about more sauce, it's not about this one or that one. It's all together. Well, the, the reaction to the second goal lends support to, to what you're saying, Morris. Um, you, you had to, well, or did you have to tweet the team late in the day because of unavailability of a yeah, couple of players? Uh, yeah, Tom woke, woke up being sick and, and um, or, or he was, you know, he had a bad week at work. You know, these, these guys are bricklayers in, in, in the rain all day and, you know, it affects them. So Tom was a boy that I trust implicitly and I told him that. Um, he wanted to come to the game, but I said, no, you've got to rest in the wax. Um, and... Uh, quite
Quinn was unfortunately at a car accident late last night. So I believe is for, for the viewers at home, is, is the he, young man okay? Yeah, he's fine. Thank God, he's you know he's got bumps and bruises and whatnot. So we we <coughs> we've we been we been negligent if we actually put him on the, the pitch today because you could you know you don't know what ever happens in these last next yeah, forty hours yeah, after a yeah, car. Yeah. So, but again, it, it opens up opportunities for for other boys and. Well, um, uh, Swanee came into the team. Fantastic. No, uh, no play. Like, again, so when you're talking about the collective, and I mentioned it in there, Swanee's no play and for the start since probably the last time we played out. Or in that eight weeks, maybe. Because Fraser come in and, and did well. So now Tom was maybe got an issue because Fraser did well. And Swanee did well. Yeah. But Swanee doesn't want. Swanee comes to training, he trains every day. And every time he comes, and he walks hard. And then he gets his chance, and because he's working hard, his level doesn't he drop off. He just steps in again. And this is where the boys, some of the boys don't get it. They start, ah, I'm not playing it. And they start missing that wee run, missing that wee extra press up, missing that wee extra thing. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mentality issue. Yeah. So what happens is then you drop, you drop, you drop, and you, you just deplete the tank. But if you keep on it all the time, when you're asked to play, bang, you're on. So, my sorry, my, my co-commentator was was very impressed with the the uh, centre backs in the in the team. You, you took Scott Dunn off at half time, mm -hmm. put Toddy on. Any particular thinking behind that? Was there, well, I mean the young man has had a good first half as far as we could see. Listen, Scott, listen, Scott did fine. Scott did fine. Yeah. So I'm very particular about when you're in a back five, you've, you've got to take up certain zones when the ball is in certain zones. Scott's new to that. So what's happening with Scott is my boys have been doing it for the last 40 weeks. They go into these zones automatically now, whereas Scott is now getting caught between being a zonal defender and a man on man defender. So what happens is if he gets dragged, there's space behind. So if my wing back gets dragged and he gets dragged, they can hit an area, maybe 30 yards into an area that man will then can't recover. So it's, it's about him understanding why and when we're doing it. Yeah. But that'll come. Listen, Scott, Scott will have a career in football, so I'm, I'm no worried about Scott. Can't be anything other than a pretty big result today for the club, obviously. Um, it's going to be a, an even bigger week with two matches ahead in the coming week. Uh, a busy week. Uh, matches at Kelty and Edinburgh, Tuesday, Friday. Um, how do you and Scott intend to uh, approach these games from a motivational point of view and a tactical point of view? Playing Kelly Hearts, you've got to... So I, I always look at it, isn't it as a man, you've got to look at the opponent you're playing. Are they technically better than you? Kelly, yes. So what do we name now? We need numerical advantage in certain areas where they're technically superior. It's, a, it's, it's about having that balance of being secure, but not too secure that they can switch play and it's too easy for them. So it's about having that balance. Are we going to go toe to toe with Kelly? No, we're not. Because we can't, we've not got the players. But we'll fight, we'll be in shape. And I would love to turn them over. I would love to turn them over, of course I would. Is it likely? No. So it's, um, it's one of the games, it's a free hit for us. Um, and it's about just refreshing the players that they, they need to be professional tonight. I know when they boys work all week and they play their game on Saturday, they want to have a beer or what they want to have a, a curry. I'm going to ask them to be um, as professional as it can be so that we're fully recovered and fresh for this next week, which is going to be demanding for them. Morris, very satisfactory afternoon for the fans here at Cowdenbeath. Um, many thanks to you and the players. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.